From the creators of Heavy Rain comes Beyond Two Souls, starring Alan Page and Willem Dafoe. And even though I haven't heard much about this game lately, it was still on my radar and I was excited when I finally picked it up. The story follows a girl named Jodie, who was born with a strange unknown spirit named Aiden that is attached to her at all times. Doctors and scientists quickly find out that Jodie is special and from a young age study her. We follow Jodie and Aiden from a very young age and all the way up to her late 20s. The story structure is a little confusing since it's constantly going back and forth in her life timeline. Even though they try their best to make Jodie appear different in each of the story transfers, it can still be a small task to figure out where in the timeline we are. It is the story structure that I haven't seen in a video game before, and even though it is odd and confusing, it actually does work in its own strange way. Without spoiling anything, the story mainly focuses on the afterlife, and certain people trying to take advantage of this by using it for their own power. While this is the main plot, the more in-depth and interesting story is the relationship between Jodie and Aiden. We see her struggle with having this strange spirit with her at all times. Sometimes she hates him, and sometimes she loves him, but what we know for sure is that they always need each other. While Aiden never speaks and can barely communicate in this game, we do feel his frustrations about the fact that he cannot escape this form. Even though him and Jody are attached at the hip, they are still two very different beings. Aiden will often do what he likes and frustrate the hell out of Jodie, but he does also obey her in her time of need. The story was always very interesting and compelling, and I was always asking what was going to happen next. For those of you that don't know, Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls are more like interactive movies. Yes, you do get to control the player and move them around rooms, but the pace is always set for you. If your character isn't in a rush or panicked, she will always walk even if you wish you could run. This can be very boring, especially when you have to walk down a large hallway, for example, but there are not enough of these moments that would make me want to stop playing the game completely. There are certain levels where it turns into a stealth game and you almost have full control over Jody, but for the most part, all of the important moments in the game are controlled by quick time events. An example of these quick time events are the fighting scenes. During a fight, you'll have to move Jody in the direction that she's either swinging or dodging. If you fail, you do not die, but you are punished by either getting hurt or captured. Early in the game, Jody is avoiding the police. If you manage to successfully fight off the dogs and climb a wall, you can escape. However, if you fail, you don't simply restart, you instead get caught and have to escape. You might miss some gameplay and cutscenes, but because of this, there is an incredible amount of replay value. There are heaps of decisions in this game to be made, some choosing simple things like what to cook for dinner, and others have a much larger impact. However, none of these really impact the ending, but the journey was still amazing, and the ending was well worth it. The second main bit of gameplay happens while controlling Aiden. By pressing the triangle button, you can simply switch from Jody to Aiden. Aiden can do a range of useful things like control enemies, choke enemies, move certain objects, heal wounds, connect Jody with other spirits, and much more. When Jody is stuck in a certain situation, she can call for Aiden. Once you can take control of him, you are able to move through walls and find the object the game wants us to interact with. However, there is not much freedom in what Aiden can do. You cannot freely choose to control or kill enemies, even though that would be much more convenient than distracting a guard so that you can sneak past him, for example. The gameplay is very unique, and a lot of people will not like it. However, if you are a tad more patient than the regular gamer, and you are after an amazing story, then the gameplay will not stop you from progressing. Certain activities are very boring to do, but getting past them is well worth the trouble. The voice acting is amazing in this game. Alan Page and Willem Dafoe are absolutely flawless, and well worth the money they were paid to play these roles. All the side characters were great as well, and I fell in love with a lot of the other people in this game. Beyond Two Souls is also very pretty. It did push my PlayStation 3 to the limits, and I did have some fr uh, frozen screen moments, but I'm glad it did because it looked stunning. In conclusion, this game was a roller coaster ride. Jodie goes from being a small innocent girl to being a badass CIA agent. She has highs and many lows, and we see her grow into the woman she is and feel her amazing relationship with Aiden. Even though the story layout can be very confusing, it is still structured well enough to not be frustrating. The gameplay is very restricting for most of the game, and this will turn off a lot of people, however, I didn't mind. Beyond Two Souls is probably the hardest game I have ever rated. After a lot of thought and consideration, I give this game a 9 out of 10.